ba ba da ba 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 da boo da da doo ba da 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 doo 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 doo. I'm just gonna start with some kind of music. I don't have anything pulled up today, so you're getting a virtual theme song that won't be a theme song, but just kind of a random theme song. Do 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 do. It's Sunrise Sunday. Do 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 do. Imagine a big old show in New York, right? Lights fly out, flashing everywhere. Big giant velvet curtain in the background. Do 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 do. It's Sunrise Sunday. Woo! <laughs> and then you get me. Kind of a bummer, but anyway, it was kind of fun <laughs> for a little bit. Kind of silly. It's Sunrise Sunday, y'all, and it is past sunrise for a lot of people, me included. But it's uh, like one something in the afternoon here, one thirty in the afternoon in North Carolina, and uh, we kind of got a kind of overcast kind of day. Big old crow back there crowing. <clears throat> My throat's all kind of jacked up a little bit today. I just woke up not too long ago. I uh, I slept in a little bit today, which is good because I was wore out yesterday. Um, got a chance just to rest a little bit. And when I woke up, I thought, man, it's probably like 9. I looked at the clock. It was 12. I said, 12 o'clock. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I lost most of my day today. But it was good. I needed the rest. So I hope you have too. It's a great opportunity to, to reflect upon rest and the value of that in your life. And it's okay to, to take some time away from everything and, and just, you know, rest. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the family. Catch a movie. Play a game. Do something. Uh, so today we're going to relax a little bit here at the old Crump's Dump and, and relax and chill a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm sorry for that. My throat is, is throaty. <laughs> so I want to share a couple of things with you. I'm going to head on in here to my uh, to my bar area. I'm going to give you a little... See that? There you go. That's my ceiling. Sorry. <laughs> I don't have my little... I don't have my camera thing today. My, uh, my mount for my phone. I'm just carrying it. So today on Sunrise Sunday, I wanted to share a couple of things with you that uh, I've been thinking about lately, like my mustache and beard, for example. How about that? <laughs> Sit here. That's better. I needed to fix the camera. Okay, stable. So I want to share things with you that, that's kind of been on my heart throughout, um, throughout the past couple of weeks. It's not necessarily something I talk about, that little mustache thing. Squirrel. It's not something I talk about all the time, um, but it's things that uh, I reflect on during the week. And one of those things that I've been reflecting on during the week, past couple of weeks, is anxiety. And I've had a few things pop up on my phone the past few days about anxiety. And I had a, a person that contacted me who's wrestling with anxiety issues. And I was able to share some thoughts and ideas and scriptures with this person to help, um, help the situation. And then today I was getting ready to start a new devotion today in the Bible. And I found the uh, first thing that pops up was a seven-day uh, journey through anxiety, right? Take Xing out, Xing the X of anxiety, right? Not 10X, but X out anxiety, get rid of it. And uh, of course, I signed up for it. It looks pretty awesome. And I did uh, the first day, and I wanted to share a couple of things with you about that. Now, the guy who's who's uh, did the devotion is Lou Gigliano. He's a popular uh, Christian speaker and pastor. And um, my daughter loves listening to him, and I think that's fantastic. And uh, I wanted to listen to what he had to say. I want to read to you something that he wrote that uh, was the first part of the devotion today. And it says, Anxiety. This looming giant in a deep valley threatens, taunts, and intimidates, incapacitates, and paralyzes. This giant is real. It can be deadly, right? Oof. Anxiety and its cousins. Like, I love how he says this. Anxiety and its cousins, right? Panic. Worry, fear, and dread is complex. There are spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, genetic, and circumstantial factors that can cause us to fall in the grip of depression. Pulling us away from those we love and shuttering our ability to deal with everyday life. To underestimate the problem or blow it off with a, hey, shrug it off and bounce back mentality is a mistake. Somebody's ringing the doorbell and my dog going crazy. All right, so the scripture I'd like to share with you as I go shut the door is, uh, is from 1 Peter 1, 3. All right, so 1 Peter 1, 3. I'm going to shut the door. Get my big face again. <laughs> All right, so this is what it says. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. 
by this fast. Let me explain to you why I've, I've shared that scripture with folks, especially if you're not a Christian, because I want to pull out a couple things from that scripture that I think apply to us all, whether you're a Christian or not. It doesn't matter. This is a, a, a point that I would like to make about this scripture, right? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, so interesting here. This is Peter. He was uh, a disciple of Jesus, and he was um, a loud, boastful man. And he did a lot of a lot of cool things you can find in the Bible. But but what's interesting here now is he's, as he's moving on, Jesus has has died, been resurrected, and moved on, and the Holy Spirit has come. He's moved on to the Father, right hand, right, and Jesus is up in heaven. So Peter starts off this scripture in in praise. He starts off in a praise when he says, "Blessed be the God." and father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the first thing he does in the midst of his mess, in the midst of things that don't look so good, is he turns to a, pos a position of praise, a position of, of worship, right? Where it takes, it takes things off, off of you in a way and, and to something else, right? So in a moment of anxiety, in a moment of, of Worry, depression, like the cousins, right? Panic, worry, fear, dread, complexity, right? All those things. It's important to, to not to, to ignore the scenario, but to combat it with, with the opposite emotions, right? From anxiety ooh, to praise, yahoo, right? And it doesn't have to be all energetically excited, like it's, I'm, I'm perfect and nothing's wrong with me. All right, the Bible talks that sometimes we can we can lift up a sacrifice of praise. Like you don't really feel like it, but you do it because you know it's best. It's the right thing. So to to actually lift up something to to have that moment. And, you know, a lot of us that talk about mindset and mindset shifts. This is a great opportunity for that, where you would you would shift from the moment of this anxiety to a place. Even if you know, like I know that I don't feel that way. I'm supposed to do it. So you just do it because it's a great place to train your brain. Great place to ch shift the mindset. And you go from that place of anxiety to a place of a position of praise, right? So there's a scripture also that says in the Bible that, I uh, can't remember the exact location right now, but the, position, the, the scripture says that we are to lift up a garment of praise to lift a heavy spirit. So it means like as we, as we lift up, as we praise, as we exalt specifically God in this, in this place, uh, it lifts a heavy spirit. So even let's think of it this way. Let's think of it that you are, you are down in the dumps, but you're hanging out with somebody, a friend or something like that, and, and they are just, the person knows everything about you, and they know all the, all, the, all the buttons, right? But they also know the place where they can make you feel better. And they say things or do things that just makes you kind of laugh and kind of take you away from the moment and, and give you some joy, right? It's that kind of a thing where you have that position and power yourself, to, to pull yourself out of some of these moments. All right, so first starts off saying, blessed be to God, the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Right, the second part says, according to his great mercy, he's caused us to be born again. Wow, what does that mean? Is that all that Christian East of all its Christian talk? All right, so let me break it down. All right, so according to his great mercy, we're talking about mercy where the, the word mercy, if you you look up in the scriptures and you, you see the original Greek Hebrew word, that, that word mercy breaking down means, break down means undeserved favor, grace and mercy. It's undeserved, right? So it's not like, well, I can't do that because I'm not worthy. I know you're not. Either am I. That's what mercy and grace is all about. It's like undeserved favor and undeserved grace and undeserved mercy. But it is extended to you because of love. What a great, great opportunity to engage with something that you thought you weren't worth of. You weren't worth it, but you are. I am. Praise God, right? So it's awesome. So according to his great mercy, according to his grace mercy, because I really, really suck. I've done some stupid things in my day. And uh, man, according to his great mercy, right? You're on this praise mode. Whew. All right, according to his great mercy, he's caused us to be born again. I am not what I was. Thank you. And now I'm something different because of what he's done for me. I've, I've had a mind shift, a heart shift, a spirit shift, a life shift. I've had everything shifted. That's another story. I'll share with you my, my other uh, talk that I do called Shift Happens. That's, that was another, that's another one. Squirrel. All right. So according to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again. Like the old things, all the junk, all the stuff that were past gone and all things like are new. It's brand new now. All right. It says to a living hope 
a living hope, not just like a, a passing hope or a meme or, you know, some little thing we see as we drive by on a, on a social media post and you, you forget about it in another 10 minutes. No, no, it says a living hope. Man, that's a, that's a great place to be, especially if you're struggling with anxiety and the cousins panic, worry, fear, and dread, right? That'd be awesome to have a living hope. As a living hope, it empowers you to escape those places of negativity, of panic, of worry, fear, and dread. I'm not saying none of us experience that. We all do. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you say. Those, those emotions come to you. It's a, it's a matter of what you do with them when they do, right? So to have a living hope, to have a place where you have an empowerment inside of you, a living hope to rescue you, to, to have this retreat, to have this freedom um, and delivery, deliverance, from all this stuff, delivery, and think of like pizza delivery, ding dong, hopes here. It's kind of like that, but it's a little better than it. It's better. It's like that, but better. All right, so have a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. All right, Matt, you're going to start preaching to me more. You're going to try to help me become a Christian, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, I'd love you to be. However, let me break down this point for you. To a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Obviously, that means literally because of the resurrection of Jesus, I now have freedom through him. That's what it literally means. But let me give you another couple of examples, all right? The living hope through resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, meaning that there was something that occurred that, that erased and eradicated that changed everything, right? It changed it all. And to make a choice to accept that moment, to accept that circumstance, to accept that, that gift, in your life, it changes everything. So, so when we receive something like that from people, let's look at a, an earthly example. Um, okay, so an earthly example might be that, let's say your house burns down. You lost everything. You lost it all. You got everything. And, and you don't really care about most of this stuff, but like, your great grandma's stuff you had stored and pictures from yesteryear that weren't digitally saved, right? Um, your high school diploma, your wedding book. I mean, you know, things of that nature, right? Think about it, right? So stuff that's like really, really like, oh man, I can never, ever replace something like that. All right, so ding dong, somebody knocks on your door. Hey, how you doing, Matt? I just wanted to stop by. So sorry, well, not your door. So you're at a hotel because your house burned down. <laughs> All right, so I just stopped by because um, we were at your wedding and we thought you'd like to have this. And somebody hands you a box of pictures from your wedding. Oh, man. You have a great time talking to them. They leave. Ten minutes later, <laughs> ming mong, door knock, doorbell, whatever. Do open the door. Hey, Matt, it's so nice to see you. Heard your house burned down, and and really sorry about that. Is there anything you need? We want to help you for food or stuff like that. No, I'm good. Okay. Okay, well, as a matter of fact, um, you know, we were all in high school together and had a good time. And, you know, I remember those times we went to this place and did this party and had this thing. It's all these people. And, oh, you remember that? Yeah, me too. Uh, all right, well, here's some pictures that I'd saved that I thought maybe you'd like to have. I don't know if, you know, you lost them in the fire or not, but I want you to have these because I figured they're important. Okay, you get the point? All right, so there are always... There's always an opportunity, no matter where you're at, no matter what you've gone through, to have things resurrected in your life, right? And even when you think it's not possible, when you've lost it, it's gone. There's no more chances. Yeah, there's a chance. Hope is knocking at your door, and, and it's been resurrected for you, right? There's things you've been through in your life that absolutely suck, right? It's, I started off by reading that, that quote from Lou Gigliano today, it says, the looming giant in a deep valley threatens, taunts, intimidates, incapacitates, and paralyzes. The giant is real, and, and it can be deadly. Right? Anxiety's cousins panic, worry, fear, and dread. They're complex. They're spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, genetic, and circumstantial factors that can cause us to fall in the grip, in the grips of depression. And as we are in moments right now, when we are facing situations that could look like that, with with COVID-19, with being stuck in your house for so long, with everything being changed and your, your traffic patterns are different, your life patterns are different, you know, you're bored, you know, uh, things, things can start happening with your head. And if you're not, if you're not aware of that, 
if you aren't working on that, you aren't focused on the things that could combat that, then I promise you, you will succumb to some of those things I just talked about. It's possible, highly. I mean, I wrestle with some of those things myself, and I have to combat them. Sometimes I win, sometimes I don't. And when I don't, it's funny. I get phone calls, I get a text, I get a message, something happens to come across my phone, and, and it changes things. Works like that. So I just want to encourage you today on my Sunrise Sunday edition here, as I share a little bit of God's word with you, um, that, that there is and there are things possible to eradicate anxiety, depression, frustration, um, panic, worry, doubt, fears. Yes, bad things have happened to a lot of people. It's, it's horrible. Yes, there's a lot of people who have died in the past couple of months, past three, four months. Massive numbers of people. How can we say God loves us so much with all these things that have happened to so many people who have died? And, and Matt, there's people that prayed for their families and they still died. And what kind of God would do that? <laughs> I understand. That's a tough question. The tough answer is he didn't. We live in a world that's full of junk, anxiety and issues, right? All these dark things that happen. And, um, you know, bad things happen to good people. It breaks God's heart. It's not that he doesn't want to help, he does. A lot of times there's things that occur in life and world that, that are choices that we've made. We all know that there's consequences for our actions. And that's no different in this world right now. We're facing a lot of things that are consequences for our actions. And, and I've told you before, and I don't get on, on LinkedIn to say this all the time, but on Sunrise Sunday is a little bit different. Things are not going to get better. They're going to get worse. There are some things that will appear to get better. They'll appear to, to seem hopeful and uh, like an answer. And it's not. It's, it's pseudo stuff. Right, we'll talk about that another time. But today, I just want to encourage you, like that little bird singing to us back there, that there's hope. There's a reason to sing a song, right? When you're feeling down like Peter did, like he was giving us an example, and not necessarily that he was feeling down that moment, but he started off in a place, in a position of, of praise. He started off with a song. He started singing as he moved into the melody of what he was trying to express. Because sometimes we just don't feel like singing. Sometimes we don't feel like doing anything, and you... It's a mindset shift, right? It's a place where you say, I'm going to do this anyway. And it's it's pretty funny, awesomely funny, that when you do those things, you feel better. It's also important to have accountability, have friends, share your heart, don't hide it. You don't have to tell everybody, but somebody. And when you do, you have an opportunity for, for hope to move in your life. But when you keep secluded completely, you have signed up for disaster. Don't do it. Find somebody, share your heart, and uh, sing a song or two. <laughs> do, 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 right? <laughs> can't not smile, come on. It's like people playing a ukulele. You can't see somebody jumping on stage with a ukulele and not smile like, ding a ding a ding a ding ding a 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 ding <laughs> That's, it's funny. It makes you smile. Anyway, boop. So I hope you guys have a fantastic week coming up. It's a big week for me. Big, big, big week. Big week. I got a little thing I'll show you here. Like on Tuesday, here's my ad, right? Tuesday, we're doing a huge, huge event here on LinkedIn. It will be 11 a.m. Eastern time, 11 a.m. Eastern on Tuesday. It's called Tenacious Business on Matt Chat Live. Do you want a job? Do you want a job? Right? So people that are looking for changes in their life, looking for opportunity experiences to have some uh, a new career or, or a different type of mindset for what you're going through, man, this is the place to be. We've got some incredible guests, as you can see in that picture. We've got some incredible guests that are going to share massive value with you, massive stuff. And we've got some great tools and tips that will help you through your life, through your career, as you experience some of the things right now we're going through uh, while you may be at home more um, or while you may be thinking about some things you'd like to do differently. Um, it's going to be really, really, really powerful for you. Uh, personal branding, resume slash CV stuff, right? Um, job opportunities. 
we actually have job scenario jobs uh, locations and and companies that are offering positions right now and we'll share those with you on tuesday i mean there's a lot of jobs thousands and thousands of jobs thousands of job opportunities for several of you that have been messaging me over this past well a lot of times but specifically over the past week i've been getting a lot of messages from folks um really from, from india i'll tell you the most was from india and pakistan that are looking for opportunities to find a job with their degree, with their with their experience that they have that they can't find where they live, and they want to move somewhere else to have a better life, a better opportunity, right? You know who you are if you're watching today. And if that's you, you're looking for that place, you need to tune in on Tuesday because there's no better, nobody better than Sohab, Sohab that's going to be, Sohab Hassan, I always screw up his name, I'm sorry, Sohab. Um, Sohab Hassan, who is going to share with you some massive tips and information about how you can do exactly that. You've been asking the questions. The answers are coming on Tuesday. All right, so Tuesday, 11 a.m. Don't forget, that is the it's the big day. Pulling it back up again. That's the big day here that you want to check out what's going on. 11 a.m. Eastern, Tuesday, 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 which will be this thing right here, Tenacious Business. It was supposed to be bigger, but it's not. Anyway, Tenacious Business, and uh, the four of us will be on the show. Uh, you've got... Um, Shanae Murray right there. So I have Hassan. And over there is the man himself, Fabian. He just has one name, Fabian. He's so cool. You guys all like him so much. He's awesome. He's a, he's a Frenchman. He's a Frenchman who lives in Singapore. He's been all around the world. He's an amazing guy. You'll love talking to him. All right, so I'm done for the day. 20-minute live here today. We're having a good time. And uh, going to have a good time. I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. I will see you again tomorrow sometime. And then Tuesday, of course, the big day, big, big day. And then Wednesday, Thursday, I'm out of here for a while as I'm headed to Duke uh, Cancer Center. And I will be having brain surgery to remove a mass on my brain. And uh, I'll come back home and I'll recover, and I will be talking to you then, and people will be like, why are you on internet now? You should be sleeping. And I'll be like, because I don't want to not be with you, because I love to be with y'all and share things with you, and we'll have a good time. Because I'm going to recover, and it's going to be good. And um, this junk in my head is going to be gone. I can't wait. I can't wait. can't wait. All right, y'all. Love you so much. Um, I'm going to put up another little screen here so I can click off here and get on out of here. And if there's anything you need, if you guys have issues right now with anxiety and, and what I said today, touch your heart, and you need to really talk about it and you need to really process something, um, I'd be happy to do that with you the best of my ability. Uh, and you can DM me uh, uh, here at LinkedIn, um, or you can email me if you like at matt at mattcrump.tv. Pretty easy, matt at mattcrump.tv. And... Uh, and share me what's going on there, and we can coordinate through email as well. All right? Thank you so much, folks. I love you, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Don't forget to join us on Tuesday. Big day. Big, big day. Big day. Be blessed today. Start off with some songs, y'all. According to his great mercy, he's caused you to be born again with a living hope, a living hope through resurrection. Jesus Christ. God bless you.